Ahoy, mateys, and welcome back to Evil Under the Sun, where we have just had a murder. Finally, a murder. This is episode 11 now, and the mystery is beginning. So now, <laughs> we are going to go out and see what happens, because I'm assuming that there's going to be much to do now. We have a mystery to solve, finally, and I am pumped, because I have never gotten any spoilers for this game. So, uh, we just saw in a cutscene that the body was found at Cutter's Cove. Let's see how far to the scene we can get before something takes over. Cutter's Cove, Cutter's Cove. You two, are you still here? Please, not now, Monsieur Perrault. My wife is too distraught to speak. Ah, uh, word must have traveled fast, I take it. So is it, like, taped off as a crime scene? I would imagine. Rosamund Darnley's gone now. What are you thinking? Okay, you don't go up and down ladders even if it's a murder scene. Okay, we get it. Um, what am I doing? I should probably just get back to the house then and speak to Kenneth Marshall. I thought that the, uh... I thought that the murder had, like, just taken place. Oh. We got Gladys here. I haven't spoken to Gladys in a while. Hey, Gladys. How is grief affecting you? Oh, sir. Sir, it's terrible. I don't think there's any suspicion I have on her, if I'm being honest. She seems relatively exempt. But I got my eye on you all the same. We've got a lot of suspects in this game, and I'm going to have to whittle them down one at a time. Because I am determined to get that correct verdict. Okay. Uh, Miss Hillary Castle, are you in your office? She is. What's good, Hillary? Oh. Monsieur Poirot. I'm sorry. M my nerves. Madame? Has something happened? Don't you know? The police have been here for an hour at least. The police? Uh-oh. In Cutter's Cove. It's Mrs. Marshall. She's been murdered. Please. Please excuse me. So this is the first Poirot hears of it. Wow, I'm sure you're so shocked, Poirot. This, you did not see this coming. <laughs> okay, um... No, there's probably nothing else in her room. Let's get going. Mr. Marshall and Linda are the two I really want to talk to. Because these first impressions after the news of the murder breaks, these are really going to make or break whether or not I suspect people for the killer. So, Kenneth is going to be the big one, for starters, since he is the wife, the husband of the deceased. The door, it is locked tight. But he is nowhere to be seen, apparently. Uh, we could go to Arlena's room, I'll bet, if we go to the balcony. Let's let's give Linda a shot if she's in her room. Quite securely. No, she's not. Damn, we should really like talk with these kids. <laughs> There's, I mean, those two probably are undergoing actual trauma. Um, I am uncertain though. Patrick is probably going to be a bit torn up too. He seemed pretty distraught in the cutscene. No, no. Okay, you know what? I'm, I don't. Wanna, I want to get right into it. Finger suspicion. Lay it on me. Just Emily Brewster? Heed our call. Wait, why just Emily Brewster? I feel like there's a lot more to do than that. Fanta Talk to Emily Brewster. Okay. Um, would not have guessed that. Let's see if we can knock on her door, and if not, maybe we'll go looking from room to room. She was there at the scene of the crime, that's right. She was the one who found the body with Patrick. Quite okay, I'm gonna just gonna go for a run of the island and we'll see who I find and when I find them. She's not down here. Gardeners are still upset. The beach, perhaps. Oh, here's Brewster. Mr. Poirot, there you are. Mademoiselle, what has occurred? It's Mrs. Marshall. Mr. Redfern and I found her in Cutter's Cove. She's been strangled. Is that all? Mademoiselle, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Row me to Cutter's Cove. Take Can me there. Can you row me to Cutter's Cove? Mr. Poirot, after your efforts to find Millie's killer, I'll row you any time you like. You need only ask me. Climb in. Okay, Emily... No, I shouldn't say she's totally exempt from suspicion, but that's a very non-killer thing to do. 
offer to take me to the crime scene as many times as I want. I still got my eye on you, Emily. No one is exempt from suspicion. Mr. Gardner, I think, still could be my prime suspect. I'm not sure I believe that he came to this island to find the treasure. Alright, new zone. Ah, that must be Kenneth right there. Oh, Perot! At last. Listen, you know how strapped I am right now with the evacuation, the home guard, and now fifth columnists? If you could leave the investigation, I would be in your debt. Buddy, say no I more. I will help in any way I can, my friend. I literally know Thank the backstory you. of everyone on this island off now. Knees to the coroner. My men have done a cursory search of the cove. We'll be back shortly to collect the remains and with equipment to do a better job. Okay, uh, who called you to the scene? Who called you? George Strum bathing beach attendant showed up on my doorstep. Miss Brewster sent him. As luck would have it, Neesden was with me, so we came right over. He's the boy, isn't he? The one who was pacing back and forth that one time and annoying the shit out of me. The cause of death was strangulation? Oh yes, no doubt about that. The handprints are very clear on the neck. Neesden may be able to tell us more after the autopsy, but it's pretty clear a very strong pair of hands did that to her. What could Dr. Neeston tell you about that time of death? He put the time of the murder at somewhere between a quarter to eleven and twenty of twelve just before Redfern and Miss Brewster showed up. Okay. That's all I have for now. Oro, I hate to drop this thing in your lap like this. Do not concern yourself, my friend. Look around all you like. Make sure everyone knows you speak with my authority. I'll do a background check on everyone on the island. I should have a report for you at the police station later this afternoon. Thank you, Colonel. Okay, it's time. Um, Marshal, we're gonna have to have a chat with you. This might be a little bit difficult, but I don't really care. I've waited so long to solve this mystery. What? Oh, horror. Oh, this is Redford. May I put to you some questions? Damn, Mr. I can Redford? never tell them apart. Okay, uh, what time did you get here? What time did you arrive here? Sometime before 12. I don't know exactly. Did Weston say 11.15 or 11.45 was the time of murder? It was one or the other, I think. How did you and Mademoiselle Brewster come to be rowing together? Good question. I asked Miss Brewster if I could join her. Why did you do that? Yeah. Monsieur Redfern, there is no longer the luxury of playing the little games. Now is the time for truth. Holy shit, Alina that's a big ladder. I swimming together each morning. When I did see her on the beach, I went looking for her. She wasn't up at the hotel. I saw Miss Brewster getting the rowboat ready. That's when I got the idea that if we rowed around the island, I might find her, Elena. I offered to row first. We set off. Okay, so that's believable, but kind of weird. Mister, you have a wife, or maybe she's just your girlfriend, I forget. But you have a reputation of just being, appearing with too many women who you are not married to. And then it's suspicious. But yeah, as I was saying, holy shit, this ladder is massive. I can understand now why Poirot never said he wanted to go down that thing. I wouldn't climb up that thing. And I'm like four times as physically fit as Poirot. Damn, it's a big ladder. Tell me what you thought when you saw Mrs. Marshall. Well, I was put out if you must know. I couldn't understand why she hadn't met me. I couldn't understand it at all. I rode from the beach. I wanted to find out what she was doing. Okay. Uh, who went for help and who stayed at the scene? Who went for help? Miss Brewster. I had this idea. I wanted to... to protect Alena. It's stupid, I know. She was beyond anyone's protection. I sat near her. We couldn't take that. We came over here and waited until the police arrived. Okay. Part of me thinks that Patrick is genuinely too stupid to be the murderer. Good day, monsieur. Oh. I said the wrong thing. What happened after their boat beached? I called out to her, but she didn't answer. She just lay there. I went over to her. There was something strange. She was so still. I knelt beside her, touched her hand, then her arm. But she didn't react at all. Then I lifted her hat. My God, her face. It was dark, mottled. Can we see? Marks. Handprints on her neck. 
Steady. Uh, I'm sorry. She was so beautiful. How could anyone spoil that? Is there anything you saw? Or Someone who that couldn't might have help it. us? Um, I'm sorry. Let me think. Take your time. There was one thing. I heard a noise while I was still over near Alena. What was it? A clatter on the rocks near the ladder. Something falling. Not a rock, though. Something light. Didn't I may have more questions for you later. That's interesting. Uh, Brewster said that somebody threw something down at her the other day, and she was in a, a similar spot to this. That could be related. Let's go have a look. Okay, finally getting to examine the body. Uh, what do we have here? Alena's coffee flask. Does it have coffee in it? Alena's coffee flask came from the murder scene. Okay. Let's... You aren't going to look at her face, are you? I want to. It's supposed to be creepy the as shit. The investigator of murder cannot be squeamish, Hastings. Let's see it. Still, if you assure me of the facts, there isn't any real need, is there? As you wish. I state categorically that Mrs. Marshall was strangled to death by a very powerful pair of hands. Don't get squeamish on me, Hastings. I want to see the scene. This is certainly significant. What is it? The bow on her hat? This is... What's significant about it? Mrs. Marshall was strangled to death by a very powerful pair of hands. Okay. Um, that probably rules out most of the women on the island. But there could have been an accomplice all the same. Like, if Mr. Gardner was the murderer, Mrs. Gardner may have been an accomplice. Mrs. Marshall was... Okay. Hello, something was dumped here. What does it smell like, Poirot? Coffee, isn't it? Coffee. Coffee, yeah. Very strange. Can we take a sample of this, maybe, to bring back to that laboratory? I'm just trying to think of stuff we could do. We have the luminescent coat, too. We did not get to examine that. So we can just become the ghost of Tom Cutter now at a moment's notice. Um, empty bottle. Can I, like, scoop up some well, sand? No, I guess not. Well, very interesting. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anything else on this island. Or this little cove I can look at. Am I the only one who thinks that this place has to be connected to the sea caves? I feel like that's a given. Colonel Weston, you got anything new for me? Give me a few minutes, would you, Perot? Alright, I get it. You gotta stare at her. Oh, we can go over this way. Ah, this must be the item that was thrown. Broken pipe. A smashed smoking pipe. Okay, time to figure out who on this island has a smoking hat. Very interesting. Um, it was murder on the Orient Express that we also found a smoking pipe. Maybe, maybe there was one in all three games, actually. I'm trying to think of how that might connect, because... This has to be related to Christine the other day. It was No, it was Christine or Emily. I think it was Emily. She was down by the deserted cove, the private one that Arlena liked to chill at, and she said that somebody threw something at her and it almost hit her in the head. Maybe? Maybe Emily was almost murdered, too. This could have not been as premeditated as we thought. I don't know. It's Barrow too soon. will not be climbing up their ladder. If something... It was a very similar situation, you have to admit. Christine... Or Emily Brewster on a beach by herself. Somebody throws something at her. And then Emily, whatever. Uh, Elena Stewart's on the beach, too. Somebody throws something at her. And she winds up dead. So we'll have to look into that more. Uh, something on the rock here. Torn piece of green fabric. The same color as Arlena Marshall's hat. But is there a piece of fabric missing from her hat? I didn't think there was. Was there? Oh, is that? No, this is just Emily. I thought Linda Marshall came here and was like, the kid should not be at the crime scene. <laughs> Those two look very similar. Can we speak? No, no, not you. I want to look at the body. Mrs. Marshall. Mrs. Marshall. Okay, is there a piece of fabric missing somewhere? Yes, it's taken from the ribbon. There's nothing. Okay. So, likely before she was dead, she was creeping around over here by the cove. Interesting. I'm trying to piece together in my head how this would have gone on. Is this another cave entrance, I'm guessing? 
Doesn't look like it goes very far back. What do we have here? That mud looks like it was placed there deliberately. And there's something shiny underneath. Oh yeah? That mud look well, what are we gonna use to break it open? Do we have a brush or something? A shovel? The good detective knows. Okay, no no no. Uh spatula. I say! A six-sided metal receptacle hidden by the mud. Like the mud must have been Alan applied fairly recently, and the metal looks shiny, almost new. And that shape—it reminds me of something. It's like the receptacle for a winch handle you find on the mast of some sailboats to winch the sail up and down. We're gonna have to have a talk with Mr. Horace Blatt then, because I'll bet he's got a tool we can use to open that. The spanner won't do. Well, this is guessing. No. It looks like it's for an Allen wrench is what it is. Something on the floor here. A smash bottle with a bit of fluid left in it. That's going to the lab. <laughs> and the fluid has the distinctive odor of an expensive perfume. Ah. Whose perfume, I wonder? Um, I don't think I see anything else back here at the moment. If that's all there is to see at the crime scene for now, then I would actually really like to get back to the Smuggler's End pub, because there was still that whole secret passageway that we just took the code out of and didn't explore the rest of it. Very interesting. So there are, realistically, I'd say, four different... No, three different ways you could approach this beach. You could come from the water by swimming or in a boat, you could come from the ladder right here, or you could come from the secret tunnel that's definitely behind the wall in that sea cave. The way that the murder our murderer got onto the scene, though, or how they escaped, we do not know yet, no. All right, Brewster, take me home. I got some mystery stuff I would stuff like to, do. to put to you that question. Right? Oh, I have questions for her, too. Of course! Okay. Let's make sure that their alibi lines up. What time did you arrive here? We arrived on the beach at a quarter to twelve. We must have come in sight of the cove five minutes before that. Quarter to twelve. How did you and Monsieur Redfern come to be rowing together? After you saw me at Rocky Bar, I changed and was about to set out on my morning row when Mr. Redfern asked if he could join me. Okay. Tell me what you thought when you saw Mrs. Marshall. Nothing at first. I assumed she was sunning herself. And then? Well, the first thing I noticed was she was lying as if she was sunbathing. But she was in the shade of the cliffs. Then, when Mr. Redfern called out and she didn't answer, that felt odd too. Once we were out of the boat, I could tell there was something unnatural in the way she was lying. Her arms. Hmm. And this was 12, you say? What time was this? He wanted to row right round the island, so I checked my watch. It was not quite half past 11. Ah. Did Monsieur Redfern often accompany you? No, this was the first time. If you ask me, he was looking for... for Mrs. Marshall. He volunteered to take the oars first. <laughs> yeah, that would be it. What happened after their boat beached? Mr. Redfern and I approached Mrs. Mrs. Marshall. I could see he thought the situation wasn't right as well. He knelt beside her, touched her hand, then her arm, and he started to lift her hat. He saw her face and cried out. And you went for help, is that correct? Who went for help? I did. We both knew someone had to. I'm not the kind of woman who would ever admit to feeling fear, but I was secretly thankful when Mr. Redfern offered to stay with the body. I understand perfectly, mademoiselle. You must have reproached yourself. Is there anything you saw or thought that might help us? No, I don't believe so. Yes, there is something. She was strangled, just oh. like Millie and the other woman, Alice Corrigan. Three women strangled in South Devon within a few months of one another. Really? Can that be just coincidence? You think it was Gideon Fell? Oh, anything is possible, mademoiselle. But I will agree that coincidence in this case seems highly unlikely. I may have more questions for you later. Of course. No, no, no. It's not too out of it the way to assume that they were murdered as a conspiracy. The three murders are connected. But for it to be the same murder would be really strange. An older la Unless Stephen Lane is like secretly Gideon Fell or something. I may have more questions for you later. Of course. 
Okay, um, anything left for Patrick? I'm really not in the mood to talk right now. Can't imagine why. Weston, anything else for you, buddy? Give me a few minutes. Okay, we must be missing something. Let me hit the finger real quick. No, not that. Not that either. Wait, real quick. We haven't examined the smash bottle close up. But yeah, there is a tiny remain of perfume. Alas, that finger. alas, Hastings, the finger of suspicion cannot extricate you from your current predicament. Perhaps I can guide you with a small clue? Oh, um, okay then. Well, Hastings, out. Fine, give me a, give me a little, give me a little something. I'll be honest with you, Poirot, I fear I am stuck. I do Hastings, not say this lightly. you are not using all of the information at your disposal? May I suggest that you look over the facts you currently possess? Right. Well, thank you, Poirot. I'll see what I can do. That doesn't help me at all, Poirot. And that doesn't count as a hint either. I'm still doing this hintless. Okay, let's just keep on looking. There must be something small that I'm missing. How about An this older ladder that has collapsed? I wonder if anyone was climbing it at the time. This is set. Something significant about her hat. What is it? You pre There must be a tool we have to use on it. Stethoscope? Well, that is not. No, it's not going to help. Did. I don't think there's going to be a heartbeat. Um. Maybe I'll give her some rum and she'll wake up. Well, that is. Not no. It's worth a shot, you guys. Aha! I've got it. We need to use the scissors for some reason. I'll just sniff to a take piece another of ribbon from the hat. Okay. So now we've got a piece of fabric and the things, other one. But that choice will not which I'm assuming we can combine in some way. Uh maybe Emily will row us back to the mainland now. Can you row me back to the mainland? Yeah, okay, there we go. Of course. Would you like to leave now? Let's do it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Much to do. Um, now, real quick, I'm going to go investigate the pub. I want to see what's down the secret doorway before we figure out where anybody else is. Anything new with you, gardeners? Or are you still just too distraught to talk? May I have a word with you? Oh, we're talking Colonel now. Weston told us to cooperate with you, Mr. Poirot, and of course we will, in any way we can. But this has been a very bad shock to me, and Mr. Gardner is always very, very careful of my health. Isn't that so, Walkley? Not sure if I buy yes, that. Yes, darling. Mrs. Gardner is very sensitive. I appreciate your speaking with me. Okay, wow, there's a lot to say. Let's go through this. Gotta check everyone's alibi, I assume. You spent the morning here, overlooking the beach? Yes, we did. And not the slightest idea in our minds of what was happening just around the corner in that little cove. And you were here the entire time? Yes, both of us. From nearly half past ten, uh, ten twenty-five, until Oakley went to play tennis at twelve. Isn't that right, Oakley? Uh, well, not exactly. I did run off to fetch your purple wool, if you'll remember. That was around 11 by the hotel. Oh, clock. Oakley. It took quite a few minutes to find it, I'm Oakley, afraid. what are you doing? 15 minutes, possibly 20. No, Don't incriminate yourself, Oakley. Minutes, surely. I barely missed you. Methinks she protests too much. All right. What is she frightened of? She's afraid of him being considered as a suspect. It is a question we must learn the answer to, my friend. Because she knows he has motive. That's probably what it is. Did you see Marshall today? Did you see Madame Marshall at all today? We? Oui. Uh, that is to say, no, no. I said to Oakley, why, wherever can she have got to this morning? First her husband comes looking for her, and then that good-looking young man, Mr. Redfern. Oh, I you I always stop. wondered, why must he go running after that woman when he has that nice, pretty wife all of his own, didn't I, Oakley? Yes, darling. She can babble all she likes, but I heard that hesitation, Poirot. That's right, Hastings. Nothing gets past us. Did you notice anything that might have a bearing upon the case? Why, no. 
I don't think so. Just that she was always around with young Redfern. Anyone can tell you that. Did her husband mind, do you think? Captain Marshall is a very reserved man. That is all the questions I have for the moment. We're devastated. We know nothing that could help. Aren't we, Orkley? Yes, darling. Okay. They are... I feel like they're acting suspicious because they're worried they will be suspected. Which isn't necessarily indicative of them being guilty. It's, it's just kind of weird. I just realized that Mr. North could just be Gideon Fell. If that's what the police report that Weston does comes back saying, then... Hello. Something on the floor here. Was this here yesterday? Hello. Another compass. This wasn't here before. And it's smashed. No good at all anymore. A smoke of luck that. It will make things easier in the end. This must have been how the murderer got in, I'll bet. Watch this. I'll bet that this tunnel leads right to Cutter's Cove. No doubt in my mind. Okay, is it time for poor O to start? May not my friend Hasting. No, he won't May actually let us go doing stuff until we find a way to make a trail of breadcrumbs, damn it. Oh, this is so obviously the way that the murderer escaped. But what would we need would the murderer have had with a compass? That is a question which remains to be answered. Because it's surely something important. Okay. Is Mr. North still chilling down well, here well, on we'll the rocks? No? We gotta find Kenneth. Kenneth is, like, the number one man I need to talk to. Has anyone even told him yet? Hillary, have you seen Kenneth anywhere? Madame Castle. Mr. Poirot. Colonel Weston has informed me that I am to give you my full cooperation. He suggested that I allow you <gasps> access to whatever you Are we getting a master key? Help, no matter how private. Yes, let's get a I master hope key. that does not distress you unduly, madame. Well, I mean, well, she's a Nazi spy. My, my duty to the owners... I, but, but I master have no choice. Here is the master key. Let's go. This will unlock any Let's door fucking go. That's Merci, big. Madame. That is huge. That is that is so big. Can you account for your movements between a quarter to eleven and twenty of twelve this morning? Well, I am. Uh, from ten o'clock till a quarter to eleven, I was seeing to it the staff were all performing their duties. Then that the dining room was cleared and made ready for luncheon. That was until noon. It was a very ordinary morning, and... until... Quite so. Hmm. Did you notice any of the guests behaving unusually? Let me think. Mr. Redfern seemed agitated, underfoot, asking if anyone had seen Mrs. Marshall. Well, that's what just time was this? Like... Between ten and half past ten, I would say. Hmm. That's just because he was down bad. Tell me about the sandwiches and flasks of coffee prepared for their guests this morning. Mr. Lane asked for sandwiches and coffee. He was planning on hiking, I believe. Mrs. Marshall asked for coffee only. Those were the only requests this morning. How early are they put out on the table in the dining room? Oh. Directly after breakfast. No later than half past nine. I wonder if you would excuse me, I... Uh, this has quite unsettled me, I'm afraid. Of course. She's rattled by more than the murder. She knows that we know you she's a Nazi spy. Students. The idea that I would have access to anything here in the hotel obviously includes the contents of her safe. <laughs> think she'll do a bunk? If she makes the... Think she'll try to sneak away? Huh? Yes, indeed. It is good that Colonel Weston is prepared to have her followed. Well, she's screwed and just doesn't even know it. Um, otherwise, yeah. Master key, that is huge. And I was about to say, Stephen Lane, he is preparing to go on a hike to St. Patrick in the Combe Church. We gotta make sure he actually went there. Because if he didn't, then that is so, so suspicious, I might as well call him the murderer. Okay. Uh, this episode might be running a little long now, but I don't care. We are going to use this master key and start doing master key shit. I do not think that is appropriate. Oh, come on. I will... We have the master key, Poirot. Splurge well, a little. Is not set. 
Gladys, what's up with you? Mademoiselle? Mr. Poirot, you gave me such a start. I'm all nerves. You saw me coming. Is all well, mademoiselle? What were you doing in your bath yesterday? It was such a mess. It took forever to clean it up. It is a little hard to explain that... Well, never you mind. I took care of it. It's my job. You better Our tip things this lady between Poirot. you and Monsieur Will Jinx. Mr. Poirot? The Marshal girl told me that there is nothing between her and my will. Everything's patched up. <laughs> I am so glad. She Did also she tell you this before or after you murdered her mother? Clearing up that mystery. If you need a helping hand in this horrible murder case, you just let me know. All right, so Gladys is on our side. That's nice to hear. So whose room can we use the master key on? Just Arlena's, I'm guessing? I do not think... Why is it not appropriate not to go... Never mind, just... Maybe he only wants us to go through the balcony doors. That could be it. Kenneth is still nowhere to be seen. Same with Linda. No. Just just none of them are going to work. Damn. Okay. Uh, there's so much to do now. I just... I don't know where to begin. 